Hello everyone and welcome back to Sophie Loves Tell. I'm going to do my July wrap up. It is not the end of July yet and I have two a uh, poem book and a book that I'm going to finish. We're going to start with the books that I have read so far. So to start with I read The Gifts of Reading by Robert McFarlane and this was a really cute essay about reading and the gifts of it. I said that um, when I bought this, this is a really, really bad description. But I really enjoyed this. I thought it was, I bunny a page and I'm not sure why. Something about, oh, giving away as many books as you can, which I'm going to, I think I bunny this to remind me that I want to start giving books as presents to people. I think that's lovely. I spoke to someone at Yalk and they were telling me about how they love this book so much. They bought seven copies and gave them to everyone at Christmas. So I, I'm going to start doing that. I think books, receiving a book is a really nice present and also it means that you know the person. I got a book for my birthday from my best friend and it's something that she knew that I was interested in and I think it just shows that it's a personal present I think and it's just a nice thing to have. So I've got this little book. I think I gave it like three stars and Goodreads. It was just a nice little essay to read. Then I have A Guide to Being Born by Ramona Orzabel I'm gonna say. And uh, this was, I can't remember all the stories in this. I should have looked through it again. But this is, basically goes through the different sections of being born. So you've got the chapters, we'll try and find them. So you've got the chapters, birth, gestation, I can't pronounce that, conception, love. And that is, yeah, so you've got all the little short stories. And... I remember this being a bit weird and wonderful, but it was quite cute. I don't really remember anything from this. I think I gave it as three stars. I wasn't over the moon about it, but it was quite a cute read. I thought I'd like it more than I did. I haven't written any notes on this as well, which is really bad. I'm really sorry. I feel really, really unorganised here. I don't think I particularly enjoyed this because it hadn't stayed in my mind at all. I might reread this at some point. That is a guide to being born. This is um, The Girl of Inca Stars. I met Kieran, who is a woman, at Yalk yesterday, and she signed a bag with her the picture of her book on the front, and she was awesome. This is about people that are forbidden to leave an island that they're in, and there was like a... It was actually... I've just been listening to Uprooted by Naomi Novak, and the two have kind of like got mixed in my brain. It's a bit like that. So they had an island where they couldn't leave, and they had to, her, her and her best friend, who was the mayor's daughter, um, uh, become friends. And the mayor's daughter goes missing. So she goes on a journey, dresses as a boy to go with to find the mayor's daughter. And they find out some different things that are happening on the island. And I thought it was a really nice book. And the pages are awesome. I spoke about this before. They have like different um drawings and doodles and stuff on the pages which i thought was really nice so that one was that i did enjoy that uh, quite a bit i think i gave this three and a half stars on goodreads it was nice it wasn't wow but it was a really nice cute book to read it's the handmaid's tale by margaret atwood and i was gonna compare the two this one uh, only ever yours by louise o'neill i haven't forgotten i've got louise o'neill book on my floor to do the comparison video i just have been running out of time lately <laughs> about women are are basically used for different things so like only ever yours women are now you're either a wife or you're a handmaid or there's something else i think there's like a a washer so like somebody somebody that helps clean the babies there's like different roles for women women are predominantly used in this society and we follow a handmaid who had a previous life and she had a child and she had a husband or maybe a boyfriend and slowly but surely they completely detached women from society. They took away their money, they took away all of their rights. Um, one day she turned up to work and she got told, yeah it's in the future because they went to work, um, <laughs> they were told um, that they're no longer needed there, that women are not going to be working anymore so a handmaid is someone that basically is there to get impregnated and to give children for the wives there is a bit in this book that's stuck in my mind for ages now and it is the man the husband and the house and the wife 
um, in bed together and the wife, the handmaid, is laying on top of the wife and the wife is looking at the man's eyes but the handmaid is having sex with her husband. So she is literally there as a vagina and a womb. That's literally her job. And they're taken care of in a really horrible sense. They can only eat certain things. They go on trips together to buy um, their fruit and their vegetables and their meat. But realistically, it's an existence that she doesn't want to do. And then her, the husband of the house has some interesting ways that aren't actually normal. And he wants, he finds it erotic when the women aren't completely covered up in these gowns, which is, you know, is fair enough. And he finds it, he wants something else from life. He remembers how it used to be and he wants that back again. So things happen because of that. They, they, I don't think I'm spoiling this when they play Scrabble together and stuff like that. And he gives her magazines to look at because women in magazines aren't allowed anymore because they're portrayed in such a way that they have independence and they show body like their bodies and they're not allowed to do that anymore because they're handmaids almost like sacred things almost like described as nuns i mean the hats they wear are almost like the like a a swan kind of nun hat so i suppose i, I don't know i'm not entirely sure but maybe it's like a, a little bit of a dig at religion or something i have to look into that a bit more i'm not entirely sure if that was margaret atwood's idea behind this book but it was very very interesting i thoroughly enjoyed it it is the adult version of well i know this came first but it is the adult version of only ever yours it's a much more historical historical version of it and i really found it interesting and i found the the ending interesting um the ending kind of leaves you guessing um what's actually happened and i again i looked up to see what people thought of the ending and I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it five stars. I'm going to pick up another Margaret Atwood book. book. This is my first Margaret Atwood. And I think there's going to have to be another one. So if you know of a Margaret Atwood book that you think I'd like based on the books that I read, please suggest one down below because I really enjoyed this. And I really liked that it left me thinking about things because I, I think when a book questions your... I was having this discussion about Louise O'Neill's books in Yauk. But when a book questions your ideals in life, um, for example, asking for it when the main character, what happens to the main character, I won't spoil it. When you question what you think is right and wrong within that book, that is an author doing their job bloody well. So I think this was awesome and I want to read some more Margaret Atwood. So five stars for that one. The next one I finished yesterday, I believe, and that was, I mentioned it again, Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I got a signed copy, so I just bought this because I thought I'd get the signed copy, but it's so chunky that I listened to an audio, and there's her signature there. Um, this was very interesting. I'm still not entirely sure what I would give it on Goodreads, although I believe I gave it a four stars. This is based on a village... Every year in the village, the he's is he a wizard? He's a I'm gonna call him a wizard. He's a wizard. Um, takes a girl to live in his castle, and they after I can't remember how many years. I think ten years. They're with them. They leave the village and they never come back. And that is what we think. What the main character thinks in this story is that her friend, Kasha, Kasha, sorry, Kasha, who is really um, outgoing, she's really interesting, she's been, she's clever, she's been brought up her whole life to believe that he's, he's going to be taken, she's going to be taken for him, and they don't know what, they just know that when they come back to their homes, they leave, sorry, I keep banging my foot and leg, um, they leave very quickly afterwards, and our protagonist believes it's going to be her, um, Kasha, but actually she gets picked and she goes to live with the wizard guy. <laughs> and I listened to this on, on audiobook by a woman who narrating it called Kate. And she had a really interesting voice for the characters. And I really enjoyed it. There's a nice love story that happens in it. The ending was really cute. It's definitely, I don't think there could be a sequel in this. I'm pretty sure it's a standalone novel. I thought it was really nice. It was a little bit mystical, magical, 
there's the the wood and the meaning behind the wood i would have liked to have known a little bit more about that i've got some questions still about how that how it was resolved and how is it result i'm not entirely sure about that aspect of the book but i really enjoyed this overall i think i gave it four stars as i said next i've got off the shelf a celebration of bookshops in verse which is sure to sure i already spoke about this in uh, booktubeathon wrap up but I'll quickly mention it again this is um, poetry about bookshops in England and uh, I really enjoyed this this is really cute I think I'm going to keep it out and keep and read it again at some point because I did really enjoy some of the poems in here there is different kind of um, ways the poems are written and I particularly liked Barrowdale's poem um, which is notes on a book barn international after a visit because it's just an interesting way it's written and sometimes I had to read it out loud to actually fully understand what the poem's about and I think that's really nice. I do enjoy a bit of slam poetry as well so I think some of the poems in here could easily be enjoyed as spoken poems as well. So all in all I really enjoyed this. I think I gave this four stars as well. I poetry every so often and this was really like nice and enjoyable to read this is my after dark book so I read it in the evening and it was quite relaxing to read some poetry in the evening so perhaps I'll take up reading poetry again and I have some more that I read for the booktubeathon and you've already he heard me speak about this but I will quickly go through them again and this is a portable shelter by Kirsty Logan, Kirsty Logan and I really enjoyed this I thought the 13 stories in here were really interesting I read them very very quickly um, they're all a bit mystical and they're all a bit weird, all a magical realism in them. I particularly enjoyed, if I can find it, I liked the bit, I didn't really understand the bit in the middle where Ruth and Lys Lyssa are talking to each other throughout the book, but that was really nice. I kind of broke up the story. The Perfect Wife was really interesting about a woman who had to be told that she was loved he did tell her that she was loved but she, he went away and she felt alone so she sorted went after another man and told her that she loved him and then she ended up with nobody because she cheated on her husband this guy didn't want her anymore because she was a cheat and then it was just an interesting concept but it was it was all a bit they're all a bit um a bit magical realism in there and I really enjoyed this overall. I do enjoy her work and I think I'm going to pick up a portable shelter at some point as well because her book's just a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to make up a word, Kafta-esque. They do remind me a bit of like Metamorphosis in here. The Grace Keepers was completely fancy, which I really, really enjoyed. So I don't know what all heart's going to be like. I think it's more magical realism, but I'm going to pick that up soon because I really enjoyed this. And that was some of my favourite author for booktube. Then I have some more booktube picks and we have Fox Fur by Sophie Carlin. I don't really know how I feel about this. It's all like really, really short stories again and they're all linked in to basically animals and being killed. And I think it was there was a political interest behind this. But it just made me feel guilty about the human race and what we do to animals. And it's quite sad, like the last story was quite sad and it made me think a bit about, I won't ruin it, but it made me think a little bit about animals and families and like if you relate, Sophie kind of, she gave the animals a voice in this and made it relatable. She she made them have a, like a very um, informal voice and made them very relatable to humans. And as a as someone that's never really had any pets for anything, I don't really understand like when people are like, oh, my cat's like my sister. Sophie obviously has a very, very strong feelings about animal hunting and killing. And I, I enjoyed this. I think it was a really, really quick, easy, easy read. If you're thinking about reading this, I'd suggest picking it up because it took me like 10 minutes, if that, to read it. Because if I start telling you anything that happens, then it's going to be spoiled. So that was that one. And then the last one, I believe, for the Booktubeathon was Danny, um, Danny the Champion of the World by Roald Dahl. This is part of my Roald Dahl books that I'm trying to get through. I really enjoyed this. It's not my favourite Roald Dahl book, but it was really cute. It's about Danny and his dad that live in the middle of nowhere 
and they are poachers so they he well Danny's dad is a poacher and Danny finds out that he's a poacher um, when he goes out one night and comes back really really early in the morning and he didn't know where he went but he hadn't poached since Danny's mother died Danny's dad finds out that the rich family um, who have all the birds in their garden or field or whatever they have um, are having a party and they're hunting all the birds so they decide they have a plan and they're gonna get all the birds themselves and I think they they eat them um, that for eating sorry they get all the birds for eating and to give them to other people and they come up with an idea and this is all about the idea that they have and Danny is the one that comes up with the idea and they have really a good like father bond father son bond in the book and it's quite nice so I really enjoyed this excited to read more Roald Dahl and to do that so that was Danny the champion of the world um I think I gave this three stars I'm gonna say then I've got Fen by Daisy Johnson I did really they just don't stay in my head um really annoyingly because I can't actually remember all of the short stories in this but I do remember thinking that I enjoyed this and I did read it very, very quickly. So perhaps that is why I don't remember all the short stories in here. Maybe it's just one of those books that I'm going to read again. I'm trying to flip through it and remember. There, the one story that I'm, that I do remember is with the girls in the house and they, um, I think they, they kill guys that they sleep with or something. And that was quite interesting. It's again, it's all magical realism books. Um, magical realism short stories. I do recommend this one more than A Guide to Being Born. This was more interesting. However, I did remember thinking that at the end of each short story I wanted more and it was very, very unsatisfactory. But that just might be the nature of short stories in general. So I have that. The other short story book that I don't have with me because my friend borrowed it to read for book club is Barbara the Slut, another story. I enjoyed that. I think that was my favourite short story collection for this month. It was all books are based on women and relationships and there were some really interesting ones in there. Um, one of the stories which I particularly liked was about a woman who is in a very good relationship and she decides she studied law her boyfriend's a lawyer and they've got their whole life planned they've got you know a really nice place together he's a lawyer they're gonna get married and then she decides actually i don't want to do law anymore and i'm gonna go get a job so she finds a job in a sex shop and she has to lie that she's a lesbian to work in the sex shop because it's a lesbian with a sex shop and it's i think it it's very very it shows people's lives and how although she had her life all sorted and she had everything that most people would want and she has the fiance and she has the house and whatever it shows that actually sometimes people change their mind though i thought it was feminist and it wasn't particularly feminist it did feel very empowering at the end of reading it with the short stories because it was very based on women and how we can change our minds and how um how we're viewed in society and just different things and I, I generally thought it was a really good short story and I didn't feel like unlike then I didn't feel um like I was missing out on stuff with Barbara the Sly I felt like the story the short stories had had fully formed a story that was Fen and Barbara the Sly which is the other short stories that I read now the other books that I have read this month are The Vegetarian by Hang Kang which was really, really good. I enjoyed this thoroughly. This is about a woman in Korea. She decides that she wants to be a vegetarian. This is all written from her husband's point of view, her brother-in-law's point of view, and her sister at the end speaks for her as well. She never speaks in this story, but you feel like you know the woman. And I felt so bad for her, like she went through all the stuff just because she changes to think that she's going to be a vegetarian. However, the fact that she's a vegetarian isn't the sole purpose of why everything changes. It's because she's having dreams and the, the, the reason why she's becoming a vegetarian, because these dreams are the reason that everything changes. So it's not, I thought originally it was she was a vegetarian and then everyone's like, oh, you can't be a vegetarian and that's why she changes, but it's not. There's a deeper meaning behind it. I didn't 
fully understand the meaning of the dreams. We thought this was a really good book, really, really well written. It was translated by, from Korean, by Deb, Deborah Smith. And I think I'm going to have to pick up Human Acts because I just really enjoyed the writing. It was so easy to read, really intriguing. And the characters were really... I just despised her husband <laughs> so much. He was such a... The brother-in-law was interesting. There was a bit about it with the painting. If you've read it, you'll know what I mean with the painting of the bodies. And that was really interesting. And almost it definitely felt like there were some higher mean like some deeper meanings in this book behind everything else and i really did enjoy this that is the veg home by Han Kang. i believe i gave this five stars on goodreads if not it's going to be a five stars a book which is also a five stars on goodreads i had quite a good reading month actually because i had some really good books and this is the court of mist and fury by sarah j mass also got a signed copy i don't know how i managed to do it um, there and this was absolutely fantastic. Like, I don't I really went high pitch there. I really, really enjoyed this so much. This is a, this is the second book in the series. I, there's got to be a book after because the way they left this, you can't leave us like that. The first one, A Court of and Roses, is, it's all a, a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Loosely now on Beauty and the Beast. The second book's not so much. The first book is more. I don't even know where to start. Like, there's so many things I've been explained enough. The second book, it's about her and her relationship with Tamlin, the fairy that she loves. And things don't go quite right how they were meant to. And the person that I was rooting for, for her to get together. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. It's amazing. It's great. There's sex scenes in here, which were very, very steamy for YA. I enjoyed this. The ending was great. I sat there and I was like, can you please just give me the next instalment now? Like, I don't want to wait, really don't want to wait for it. And it's still in my mind and really, really, really good love story. <laughs> and I don't know what else I'm going to say. It was just fantastic. So I have that one, which is definitely a five stars. The other two books that I am reading at the moment and I hope to finish, I'm going to try and finish them tonight. If not, very, very soon. So I have Feminine Gospels for Carol um, by Caroline Duffy, and this is for the Feminine Orchestra Club. This is the pick. I have, I'm halfway through, maybe more than halfway through. I'm in a poem right now, and it's very, very long, and I gave up. It's The Laughter of the Stafford Girls High, and I got a little bit lost, so I stopped reading it. And I keep rereading that same poem because it's long, and I feel like in poems I want to read a poem in one sitting. I don't want to stop and then start again. Um, so I'm going to have to keep. I'm going to have to read it again. But this is really interesting. It's it's all about women, as you would expect. And the last one, which I'm buddy reading, I've mentioned so many times with Tracy Flamingo reads Ian Pierce Arcadia. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I'm on chapter 50 right now and I've got um, to read some more because we're doing 50 pages a day. I just want it to... I don't know. It keeps getting really good and then stopping and then getting good again and then stopping. I just keep feeling like I want it to start getting better and better. Like it keeps getting good and then dipping and... I don't know how I feel about this. I'm going to see what happens in the ending. Uh, some interesting bits of the story. I like the character Rosie a lot. She's really interesting and the concept behind what happens to Rosie is really interesting. There's loads of different, well there's three different worlds I think. I keep getting confused between the worlds. I'm not entirely sure how I feel, feel about that and how one of the worlds I don't particularly understand yet and I feel like it's getting a little bit late in the book for me to, like I'm there, getting a little bit late in the book for me to like not understand it and maybe it's just me but i just don't understand this book but we'll see what happens um i'm gonna hopefully finish this within the next couple of days before i go away because i do not want to take this away with me because it'll be pointless for a chunky book and like, hardly any of it left to read so i will tell you my thoughts on this when i finish it but yeah that's all the books that i read this month so i have 15 if you count those two so i've got them here so those are the books that i read this month i hope you enjoy this video i'm soon and i'll speak to you all soon have a lovely day and happy august bye everyone